Good morning, my friends, and welcome to another issue of Midweek Encourager. God has given us such a beautiful day and predictions for a beautiful week, and we're just excited that you've chosen to spend a few minutes with us this morning. Uh, standing here in front of one of our beautiful stained glass windows that uh, allows God's light to shine through and just reminds us what it means to be in God's light. I'd like for you to open your Bibles, please, to Isaiah chapter 42. And uh, uh, in just a moment, we're going to, to read a, a verse or two out of Isaiah 42. And uh, then, then we'll proceed with that uh, devotional thought. But, you know, God has given us the privilege of being light in this world for him, for him to shine through us. And so let me encourage you this morning with that. In Isaiah chapter 42, <clears throat> we're going to read verse 16, which is a, it's a nice long verse uh, and, and, and just such a beautiful, beautiful picture of God's grace and God's provision for us. Isaiah says, And I will lead the blind in a way they don't know. In paths that they've not known, I will guide them. I'll turn the darkness in front of them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I will not forsake them. So once again, another, another reiteration of God's promise that he would never leave us. He would never forsake us. Now, uh, I, over the years, I've had a number of friends who were blind. And, you know, the, uh, one of the scary uh, prospects for anyone who doesn't have their sight is an unfamiliar path. Uh, this, is, this is why uh, uh, blind people can navigate through their homes without any problem. They know exactly where everything is. They know where all the furniture is. They know where all of the knickknacks are. They know, they know everything in their home. When they come to church, they know, they know the locations of most of the items in our church. And so they're, they're comfortable, they're safe, they feel safe in this. Um, but God says, I will lead the blind in a way that they don't know. And I'll lead them in paths they've not known, but I will guide them. And you know, that's one of the beautiful things about ha having a personal relationship with Jesus is that he will guide us. He'll provide sight when we can't see. He'll provide insight when we can't understand. And so... Uh, throughout the scripture, the metaphor of light and darkness has been used uh, to, as, as a picture of freedom versus sin. It's been used to picture uh, the things that are for God and the things that are outside of God, without God. Jesus, you recall, consistently referred to himself as the light. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 16 tells us, the people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. And for those traveling in the region and the shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. Scripture also refers to you and me as light. Uh, in Ephesians 5, 8, Paul said, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are the light of the Lord. And so we've got a responsibility to this darkened world, this sin-darkened world, don't we? It's our job to shine forth Jesus' light for the glory of God. Uh, Jesus went on to describe the freedom that uh, comes from bringing ourselves into the light. In John chapter 3, 
get that turned over to that ribbon. John chapter 3, verses 19 through 21. <clears throat> now, you, you, for context, remember John 3, 16. Well, we're three verses past John 3, 16, okay? In John 3, 19, Jesus said, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by truth comes into the light so that it may be plainly seen that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. You know, the, one, of the, one of the very worst effects that sin has on you and me is the, the absolute shame that it causes us to hide our faces from God, right? You recall in, in, in Genesis, Adam and Eve hid from God once they had tasted that forbidden fruit, the very first sin. And still today, even though Christ has paid the price for every sin we could ever even imagine committing, Jesus paid the price for all of those sins and we still hide ourselves from God. And that's not freedom, that's not joy. We can confess those sins, come back into God's light, and be restored to fellowship with Him. God longs for us to run to Him when we make a mistake, when we commit a sin. In the, in the lesson of the prodigal son, God is the Father who's waiting with arms eternally extended to you and me, no matter what we've done. He longs to embrace us. He longs to restore us. He longs to free us in his eternal embrace. What a precious and wonderful and loving God we serve. He longs for us to step out of our sin, step out of our shame, to bring ourselves fully into his light and be delivered from the destructive effects of our sin. The verse that we read first, Isaiah 42, 6, let me read it one more time and listen to it with, with fresh eyes. I will lead the blind in a way that they don't know. In paths that they have not known, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them. You see, nothing you and I could ever do would cause our God to forsake us. God's not surprised by anything that you do. God's not surprised by anything that I do. He knows that we're made of dust. He knows that the sin nature still lives inside of us. He's not surprised by our sin. He longs to free us from the power of darkness and the power of sin. We don't have to hide from God. We can come before him openly and honestly and live as children of light, as Paul said in Ephesians 5, 8. We can experience true freedom as our sin is forgiven and times of refreshing come into our life when we walk back into God's light. First John 1, 7, uh, God said through John, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. 
when we commit ourselves to walk in, walk with God, to walk in his light, to live in his light, he'll guide us to his light. Jesus' blood is powerful enough to cleanse us from the inside out to where we are clean and pure. There's freedom in a heart that's totally and completely his. May today you be set free from the shame and darkness as we live openly and honestly before our precious loving God. I hope that this has been an encouragement for you as it was for me. Let me just encourage you as well that we have on Saturday morning an opportunity to be light in our community, outside the walls of our church. We're going to have a, a, we're partnering with Bellevue Baptist Church and with the Memphis Food Bank, and we'll be giving away food in our parking lot for 300 families. Oh, dear friends, I hope that you'll come and be a part of this historic event here at Cherry Road. And we're gonna meet in the, uh, in the auditorium at 845 for a time of instruction, a time of prayer, and, uh, and we'll have a, just a special time of committing this, that morning to the Lord Jesus and asking God to make us light and love in the eyes of our community. We will then uh, prepare uh, the, all the food, uh, bag it up, sack it up, box it up, so that it's ready for our friends and neighbors to come and pick it up and be able to share with them not only physical food, but also spiritual food as we, as we greet them car by car by car and family by family by family. And we share with them the love of Jesus in a tangible way and a physical way. I hope you'll come and share with us during that morning. We'll be through about 1230. And if, uh, even if you're not able to physically to come and be a part, I pray that prayerfully you'll be a part of this great event this Saturday, May 1. Meet with us at 845 for prayer and instruction, then the food prep, then the food distribution, and we'll be able to share with our friends and neighbors about the love of God. I hope you'll come. If you can't come, I hope you'll pray and that you'll help us and, and trust with us, trust God for his results. Hey, listen. I love being your pastor. I love you. And if there's a way that I can help you, if there's a way that I can pray for you, please give the church a call and I'll be delighted to call you back. You have a wonderful day walking in the light and the freedom of God's love. May I pray with you? Oh, dear Father, I love you. We love you. Thank you for the privilege of being your children. Thank you for the privilege of being children of light. And thank you for the privilege that we have of shining the light of God into our neighborhood, into our community. God, may you use us not only Saturday, but today to share your light and your love with someone else. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks again. Look forward to seeing you soon.